Okay. We have a lot to cover today. So in the interest of time and getting to the real good stuff, I will kick us off and say thank you all for joining us. I'm sure we'll have more people joining the call as we go. Um, but I just wanted to take a minute and welcome you all here to today's Network at Work virtual workshop. Um, this is the first virtual program of our fall professional development series. Um, and this one is AI Advantage, Harnessing Technology for Your Career Path with Selena Trotter, class of 08. We're so excited to have you here, Selena. Um, so before we begin, I just wanted to quickly introduce myself and our program to all of you. Um, my name is Christy Kennedy. I am class of 2010, Albright House, um, and I am also the director of Alumni Professional Networks and Career Programs here at Smith. So my role is to lead programs and events such as these that bring Smithies together to connect and build skills around personal goals. So in addition to our virtual events, our team offers in-person networking opportunities. We connect Smith alums with career coaches like Selena and Jamie, who's also joining us today for one-on-one -on -one support. And we compile on-demand resources for you to access at any time to meet your individual needs. So we really want to create a program that lives up to our value that anything a Smithy needs to find your version of career success exists within our network. And my goal is to help you do that. So that's enough from me. <laughs> um, and I will now pass it over to Selena who will get us started introducing herself and getting us into our workshop for the day. Hi everybody. Uh, we can uh, share screen or uh, yes, share our my presentation. So this is the first PowerPoint that I've made since grad school. So hope it's not interactive, like there's no flashy buttons. Sorry about that. Um, but here it is. I uh, want to take a little bit about myself, but he, this is just the intro page. And this is my daughter who went to Smith with me for the reunion in May this year. Okay, so this is me. I will give a little bit of background of what I do or what I've done and what I do now. So I majored in economics and East Asian studies. I lived in Gardner all four years, except for when I lived in China studying Mandarin. Um, after I graduated, I work at the Wall Street Journal. I got a master's degree in education at University of San Francisco. I became a high school teacher for a couple of years. And that really started a process of doing a ton of things all at once. So while I was a teacher, I also started businesses. I started mentoring and consulting. I uh, got into real estate investment. I became the executive director of a nonprofit just before I had my first child. One of the businesses that I started was in-home dog boarding, which I currently still do. So there's just like dogs around me all the time. Um, and then I think during the pandemic, I saw so many women suffering about careers, about home life, about the pandemic. And I wanted to be part of some solution for the suffering. And I didn't know what to do. So I thought I would just start interviewing women about their careers. To, I guess my goal was to find that career that would be perfect for women. And obviously it's going to be different for everybody, but what are the things that would make a woman successful in her career, given that there's often demands of being at home with their parents or being at home with their children or or whatever it is. And because of all of the pandemic der derailments, I was like, okay, well, this is something I can do that if I share women's stories, that might help more women figure out what is out there for them. And then when I was doing all these interviews of women and, and I would write these stories up and I have them on my website, um, I noticed that there was some universal truths to most women that women were taking the easiest next step that wasn't necessarily the best one that they would later have regrets for, but that was the option that was first available to them. And then also I just saw a universal amount of neglect and a lack of support for these women in their career paths and mentorship. So I decided to dedicate myself to helping support women in navigating their career paths. And so that's how I got into executive coaching. I still do the storytelling for women's careers because I want to support and share more women's stories and help highlight women's lives to, to promote, like, look at the amazing things that this woman has done. 
but also we'll just work with women individually to help them navigate transitions. And I think that's, I think that's really where my, my niche is as a coach. I work with a lot of founders and people in finance and tech, but I help women with transition. So figuring out how to handle the transition, whether it's a promotion or wanting to switch jobs or switch career tracks or go back to work after maternity leave or just a long stint at home. And we just work on that strategy together. So that's about me and what I do. Um, so we can get started with getting into AI. So today we're going to talk about generative AI and how it can help you in the job seeking process. And I'm going to go over a lot of AI stuff in general. So you can learn AI in, with me today without being a job seeker in, in general, because I think a lot of these skills are transferable, but we're going to learn how to use ChatGPT. And then we're going to learn about the applicant tracking systems and how to write resumes, cover letters, interview prep, and negotiation. And for all of these, well, the five things that are not ChatGPT, there are specific AI tools that you can use that I'll go over. But for a lot of them, we're going to just also practice using it with ChatGPT. Because if all else fails, ChatGPT or BARD are examples of things that um, you can basically once you know how to do the prompting, you can get a lot of answers out of it. Um, so if you guys want to do a live experiment with me, uh, you can on your own computers open ChatGPT and um, we're gonna go over this together. So there's basically a formula that you can use to get a more ideal prompt with your ChatGPT or BARD experience. And the different components of it our persona or how you want ChatGPT to respond. Like if you're asking ChatGPT a question, like you are a teacher of 18th century literature or, or whatever it is, you can give that persona to ChatGPT. The context, so what under what circumstances that they're answering this question and how are they gonna do it? The task, which is obviously the most important part, the actual ask, using a verb, okay, make this for me or say this for me. Um, you can give it a specific format for how you want it to, to do the output. So like straight text might be what will be the default, but you can actually ask it to make different format styles for you. You can give an example of what you're looking for so that it can model its answer off of that example. And then the tone or, or how you want it to write it. Like, for example, if you wanted this output to be in the style of Jane Austen or Snoop Dogg or to be more formal or more witty, you can give those tones as an example. So in this case, um, we're going to ask ChatGPT or Bard, whichever one you want. And I really hope that you do this because maybe we can share some of the answers. Um, you're going to ask it to come up with some career possibilities for yourself. So this is something I actually do with a lot of my clients where they're maybe they're feeling stuck of where they are in their life and they want to figure out what else is out there. So we'll live brainstorm together. But in this case, we're going to ask ChatGPT to do it for you. So in this case, we're giving it the persona of being a career coach. So you are a career coach specializing in helping people find their dream job. And the context is like about me. So in this case, it's going to be me. I'm a 37-year-old mother of three kids uh, under the age of 10, and I want to find new part-time work in San Francisco Bay Area, um, which might be true, I guess. So in this case, um, uh, that's usually what I do with the clients to figure out like what job is next. But you can also think about it in terms of any transition you want to make. And then here's the task. And there's actually going to be two asks in this case. Write a list of possible careers I can get started on now that my youngest is in kindergarten and I have more time during the day. I have a background in business development and community work, real estate, dog care, and curriculum building. Summarize each career by what, so that the two asks are right and then summarize. Summarize each career by what educational and experienced background is good to have and also share the remote work possibilities, which I think everybody really wants to consider nowadays. And then the format, I'm asking for to write the recommendations in a table and tone, there's not, it's not really a tone, but be as concise as possible. Um, you can also ask it to be, to expound on all the examples later. 
I'm not giving an example in this case. So every time you use ChatGPT, you don't necessarily need to use all of these things. The more you have, the more on point it will be to what you're looking for. But really, it's not always necessary to have everything. You, the most important is the task. Um, so this is what ChatGPT came up with for me. A real estate agent, which is not something I'm interested in. Um, doggy daycare, which is interesting because that's what I currently do. And it also says remote work possibilities low. Not true because I do it all from my home. Um, curriculum and development, business development consultant, community outreach. These are all like things that are possible. And it gives you a little bit of examples of what experience I need. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh, I can just go over this one and then we can circle back to it. So one thing that I think we don't really know the limits of generative AI. I think the point is that there are no limits, that it can keep learning and becoming better. And so you can always go back to ChatGPT or BARD and ask it what it's capable of and refresh your memory. So in this case, I told ChatGPT that it's an expert of itself. And I want to know about the different formats that you can, that I can get answers in. And so it just spewed this out. I gave 10 examples of different formats. Um, the... So it can just do the plain text. It can create lists for you. It can be conversational. It can do a question and answer. It can do poetry. It creates code. I know this, a lot of my clients use it to fix bugs in their code, or a few of my clients do. Um, it creates table and charts. And so you can just always, you can also ask it, what else can you do? Okay, so that's this page. Does anyone have any? Um, Saren, I believe is how you pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, says that they liked the info it could put out for remote work possibilities. Saren, do you have more to share about what you? Oh, and yeah, that is the correct pronunciation. Thank you. Yeah, I'm actually immunocompromised and the uh, way it, so putting in even the remote work opportunities is very helpful and informative as someone with that as a high concern even now. Oh yeah, the compensation ranges is also a very nice touch. I'm gonna have to add that to Abby. Right. Yeah, I think he, it's like, you really have to look at your life and figure out what's important for you and get, I. Um, my husband doesn't have immunocompromised, but he doesn't wanna go back into the office. So I think that's just the general world. Like people are fighting going back into the office and employers want them back in the office. So you have to figure out that, that what jobs will allow you to do it. But I think most of us want to be home when we want to be home. Um, okay, we can, does anyone want to give an example of something that what they're currently doing and what uh, ChatGPT said they could try doing? Yeah, Elizabeth Borland, I'm seeing that you put something in the chat. Um, do you want to unmute and talk a little bit about what you saw? And maybe we can get more specific for you. Sure. Yeah. So I'm I'm really interested in this um, because I teach a class, a capstone class with um, sociology majors in uh, as a professor. So um, so I have a lot of students who are interested in you know, going on the job market. <clears throat> so I put in a prompt kind of with that in mind, saying that I was a 22 year old undergraduate senior sociology major who's graduating soon. I said, I'm seeking a full time job to start after graduation. And then I said, um, you know, kind of using your language to write a list. I have a background in retail sales, nonprofit fundraising, volunteer work with senior citizens, and experience doing qualitative research, just sort of imagining some things that my students often will have on their resume. Um, and what I wound up getting in my table was like very generic, right? So it says like social services, uh, you know, you need to have strong interpersonal skills, <laughs> human resources, same thing, uh, fundraising, market research, and retail management. So um, I think probably I need to make the prompt, I don't know, like a little bit more targeted. Like what would you suggest that, um, that somebody in this scenario might want to do to have like somewhat more targeted suggestions? Because I think these aren't, they're not bad suggestions, but they're pretty generic kind of, you know, not really sending people in ways that might stimulate um, a search. So you were thinking about multiple people when doing the prompt, which is fine. 
But I think somebody could really specify their own life and qualifications or qualities that they want from their life. So they can go in like very specifically their background and maybe they can add in where they want to live, the income that they want to be making. They want to be remote. They want to be in person. They want to be in the field. They want to be in a lab. There's very specific qualities that an individual can add that somebody who's just being generic cannot. So I think as you, if you can be more specific in what you want out of it, you will get a more specific answer. And then when you're being broad, you are going to get these broad things. Like it's going to be the most vague output if you don't finesse it to be more precise to what you want. And I think that that's a lot of complaints around ChatGPT. It's like the writing's terrible. It's so vague. It's so blasé. And I think that's true. But if you can write your prompt to be more exact to what the examples that you want, you'll get a better answer. Is that helpful, Elizabeth? Yeah, thank you. That is, that's very helpful. And I think kind of listing out some of those things you might be specific about could, could be helpful if I'm sort of guiding students to do this or, you know, for everybody who's listening, right? Thinking through what some of those specificities are. And I think for everybody, it's going to be different. So like everyone like, takes stock of like, okay, here are must-haves of my life that are non-negotiable. Here's what I'm willing to compromise on. And you work with those must-haves first, and then you can see what the output is. If there's anything that's in line, that's somewhat close to what you want. And then you can, if, if there's a couple things that are close, you can ask for more examples within that. So within the same thread, ChatGPT is still a, a, a career coach, as you told it to be, it will give you more specifics on that career option. So tell me more about what it looks like to be in this career space. And you can also just start having conversations with people in those career spaces to find out what else is possible. So like here's a, a generic list. Okay, this seems like it could be fine. Let me go find people who I can talk to about this. Because obviously like the online world is a flat space. It's better to be with the people and talk to them and see what, what life is really like. Yeah, and Selena, I'm seeing here in the chat, um, Jamie also, so Jamie didn't use it to find new career paths, <laughs> but Jamie used it to identify <laughs> publications where she could pitch her work. And um, seems like you found it really helpful, Jamie, because it also shared um, submission guidelines for each publication. So there, I think your point overall, Selena, is that you really can customize this for more than a job search. Being as specific as possible is a huge element of getting what you really need out of the tool. Um, and it's really customizable that can give you some really valuable information that you can further explore. I Maybe. love Elizabeth's question because that's actually what we're gonna do next. She's saying, um, what about network specificity? So we're actually, I, with network, like being, are, you're saying like building your network or like within a niche? Well, we can work within both, but right now I'm going to, we're going to focus on how to network with ChatGPT. Okay. So we're going to learn out how to connect with people on LinkedIn who were perfect, uh, perfect strangers with us. So if you have LinkedIn, you can do this with us right now. Um, so everyone open up LinkedIn and ChatGPT together. If you don't just enjoy the show while, while we try to do this together. Um, hold on one second. I, yeah. I just need to make sure I'm covering the things that I want to cover with you guys. Okay. So if you are thinking about networking with people, try to imagine somebody in the world that you want to connect with. Um, it can be somebody in a specific, uh, like a company that you want to work with. It can be a smithy who you remember, or maybe even the new president. Just think of somebody that you can try to connect with and maybe try to quickly find them. If you are feeling too pressure, you can just do it on yourself, um, which would also be interesting with this thought exercise. But eventually you want to try to do this with somebody that you want to connect to because they're the hiring manager for the role that you want. They're a senior level at the company that you're thinking of applying to. So think about it in, in that way and go to that person's LinkedIn profile. And 
And if all else fails, you can do Christy on LinkedIn too. Everyone can try to connect with her. Um, when you're on that person's profile, you should be able to, for most people, there's a, there's a few buttons under their picture, like a little bit down. There should be um, a button that says more, and then you can download the resume. Uh, let me know if you guys are, are keeping up in the, in the chat, just so I can make sure everyone's sort of on the same page. So like do a thumbs up if you're on that person's profile and you can download their resume. Thanks, Christy. When, um, you can also just take a couple more moments to think about how, what person you would want. Um, but the goal is to be able to copy and paste their resume into ChatGPT. So that's why you're downloading the resume and not just copying and pasting the whole LinkedIn page because that just, the LinkedIn page just has a lot of information. So you want to go, um, oh, and while I'm waiting, let me just, take a moment to credit Jeff Sue. He is a Googler who has a series of videos about using uh, AI and navigating the job seeking process. And I learned a lot from his video. So I wanna credit him right now because a lot of the information he has, I, I'm, I learned from. It was actually very hard for me to not just like verbatim do everything he did because he's really good. So you should all check out Jeff Sue's videos on YouTube. Jeff, so it's at the bottom of this page. It's J E F F space S U. And I can't tell if he lives in the U S or Shanghai. Cause a lot of his stuff is in Mandarin too, but he's a Googler. I know that. Selena, um, there's a question. Is it where it says save to PDF? Is that what we're looking for? Yes. Okay, great. And then, um, yeah, go ahead. I was, I was going to move on. So you're also going to have to open up ChatGPT. And what we're going to try to do is figure out, um, use ChatGPT to connect with this person. So on, on my screen, you after you download their, their profile, open up ChatGPT, you're going to see the prompt that you're going to write. Um, and Lindsay, I don't know if you can copy and paste the prompt into the chat so that it's easier for people to, the second, the one on the left. So it's easier for people to put it into their, their chat GBT. But you're going to tell chat GBT that they're an experienced career coach with over 10 years of experience. Based on this resume from LinkedIn, can you generate a summary of this person's accomplishments and highlight their top three achievements? please provide details to highlight their unique journey. And after you've written that prompt into your chat GPT, you're then going to copy or paste the resume that you've copied before. So you're basically summarizing a person's professional life using chat GPT. So they'll give you the high level or it, ChatGPT will give you the high level learning so you don't have to really research in a way or or the research is done for you so you can move quickly. And it also helps because you're going to you've now created a, a structure for ChatGPT's learning. Your next prompt is going to be connected to this. So ChatGPT has learned who this person is and their professional development. Um, and then you're going to ask ChatGPT ChatGPT um, and a new prompt. So after their output of what, what their unique journeys are, you're going to say, I am a job seeker and I want to connect to this person on LinkedIn. So you're going to copy that person's name. Obviously we're connect to X based on her top three achievements. Give me three practical ideas of how to get her to accept my LinkedIn request, prioritize lesser known advice in your answer explain using detailed answers and go step by step. And so this last part is actually really interesting because you first you just say, um, give me some ideas. But when you say like prioritize lesser known advice, ChatGPT is really gonna go outside of the box and come up with more out, out of the box ways of getting to know the person. So I think, you know, one time I did this, it said like create a video 
of you and and sending it to that person which is fine you could then like ask chat to help you make the video so it can give you the steps needed to to fulfill that request and the whole idea of getting to know this person in a more in-depth way is so that they know that you really do want to connect to them that you see them as being very valuable and people will put forth effort when they see that you've put forth effort into getting to know them and so if we want to ask that person for some help, the more effort you can put into this, the better. But obviously that, that effort being ChatGPT will help, help you craft that path. Okay, I think we can go on to the next page unless anybody has any questions about that first part because we're gonna, we're gonna keep going in this, uh, this networking scenario. So first we figure out who this person is that we wanna connect to and we, um, to figure out the best way to connect with them. Now we've connected with them and we want to have, we're going to have a coffee chat with them because they saw how much effort we put into, you know, getting their attention. And so they're going to agree to this coffee chat um, in person or on Zoom. It doesn't matter. But before the coffee chat, you're going to ask ChatGPT advice in two ways. You're going to ask advice uh, about questions to ask them about themselves. And then, um, questions maybe about the role. So the first prompt is I have an upcoming coffee chat with a with this titled person at this company. And I would like to understand how to get into this field as well. And based on her resume, which you've already posted, what are 10 questions I can ask so that she knows I've done my homework and am considerate of her time? Prioritize lesser known unorthodox, unorthodox ideas in your answer and explain using detailed examples. And here's her resume again, if you, if it's a, this is a new prompt. Okay, so that's like to get 10 questions that are really tailored to that person's experience. Um, is this resonating with people? Okay, and then the um, next part, I don't know if I'm moving too quickly, but the next part is to, because presumably you're networking with this person because they're somewhat related to the job that you want. So when you're with that person, not only are you going to ask about them and their career path, but you're also going to ask questions that are very specific to this job. So you're going to say in a different prompt, you are a career coach with 20 years experience helping job seekers get into this industry. I have an upcoming interview, like a job interview. Even though this is still related to the coffee chat, you're going to prompt ChatGPT as if this were a job interview with this person's title at this company. And I want to impress the interview with my knowledge about the role. Based on this job description, you're going to paste the job description at the end. Give me a list of five, five questions I can ask at the interview so they see I'm extremely proactive and enthusiastic about the role. Prioritize unorthodox, lesser known advice in your answer, explain using detailed examples. And then here's the job description. So you're gonna get 10 questions about this person's life and you're gonna get five questions to ask about life at this company and whatever the output is. So that when you're in this coffee chat, this person is gonna see that you're very keen on this role, that you really want to get in this industry, that you know what you're talking about. Um, and then hopefully the they'll pick up on that and help refer you into this role. So Selena, um, yeah, I am. Some people are saying that this is perfect. What a couple folks are asking if we could go a little bit slower, but I just want to note for everyone, I am now pasting the prompts in the chat. So hopefully that might make it a little bit easier to follow along. And as we said, we'll have more time to practice at the end. So if you're not able to generate it, in real time, we'll go back and, and revisit these things as we go. But we can also um, move a little bit slower as we okay. go through these prompts. I think that'd be- mind being quiet. Um, actually, and also you, you're going to send out the, um, the deck to everybody who- Absolutely. Today. Yep. We're going to share all of this material with you. And it also is going to be up on our YouTube for you to refer back to when you do this on your own down the line. So- um, you'll be able to rewind and pause too. <laughs> yeah, that's almost why I want to go fast just because there is, we have a lot of parts of this and this is just like the networking phase of the job seeking process, which is undoubtedly the most important part that and like actually submitting your resume for a job. But like networking, 
Christy and I have talked about, or I think everyone knows networking is probably the most helpful part of looking for a job. If you have a really strong network, then you'll have an easier time finding what jobs are out there in theory. Okay, so this is the last practice session or question that we're gonna put into ChatGPT. It's really long, um, but this is the thank you email after you've had the coffee chat with the person. And you know, just to reiterate your strengths as a person, you're gonna prompt ChatGPT that you're a career coach with, I like, I don't know if the years matter, but you know, the more the merrier, right? In this specific industry, I just finished an interview for this specific role at this company. In the interv interviewer gave me an example about something from our coffee chat. So you're gonna have that, you're gonna write whatever that is in your, this one is not something you should do live because you know, this is going to be after your coffee chat. So whatever example has come up in the that you learned from in your coffee chat, you're going to add into this ChatGPT post. So ChatGPT will know how to reference it in its message. So be more detailed about whatever it is here. Please write a post-interview thank you note. And include that example to show that I was paying attention. Even though, I think this part's cool. Even though I don't have experience in whatever field that you're trying to get into, emphasize my transferable skills in a current role in whatever industry. And I've seen this multiple times. ChatGPT will come up with unique ways to tie whatever role like you have into whatever role you could be in with you if you're specific here. So I think that's really cool that ChatGPT can think about that for you. Keep the <laughs> and here's the tone. Keep the tone lighthearted, professional. Do not use any fluffy and vague buzzwords. Do not suck up to the interviewer. Stay within 200 words because this is just the follow-up email. You don't want it to be like a huge essay that they have to go through and then not actually read because it's too long. Okay, so that was that concludes the practice portion of using ChatGPT. The prompt engineering is a job in itself. So mastering how you can use prompts to get a better answer is, is a real, like if you can do that professionally, you can make hundreds of thousand dollars a year as a job coming up with unique prompts for, for ChatGPT. And that's because there's just so much unknown about what is possible with ChatGPT. So people are coming up with new prompts all the time that will create even better answers that are more in line with what, like, you know, it's not like how we just how we used to use Google 20 years ago. Like we can't use ChatGPT in that same way of just like, okay, I have this question. Like you can get really in depth with the kind of prompts you give it. And so, you know, if you want to write that thank you email sounding like uh, Mark Twain, I think is a really funny one or E. Cummings, if like you're going into some art field, I wouldn't do that in tech, but you know, you can have fun with it too. Um, I'm going to start having screenshots. So instead of telling you what to do, I'm going to start showing what ChatGPT or whatever these websites are that look, they look like. So we're, you're not going to have any more practice time. We can do that together at the end. I have um, a question. I don't know how to raise my hand. I'm, I apologize. But I had a quick question going back to the networking part with LinkedIn. What about the potential of using with ChatGPT about, in the first exercise, you're talking about specific opportunities to, to, to consider what about the idea of like seeing like if it's if it's someone that you want to reach out to and it's their network and you see that a you guys have similar people in common but those are ways to see if there's potential opportunities from like their experience or like their network of people like there's opportunities from how you could connect that way i'm not really phrasing it correctly but using their you basically using your network to figure out what other opportunities might be easily more available to you because of that network and i think that's what linkedin for is for because they'll they'll tell you all those people you might have to be a little bit more creative on your side than asking ChatGPT. but i mean i would say i have these connections in common because we mm -hmm. went to school together or because we lived in the same city and just mention them in that initial, uh, like mention that's how you know those people um, in that initial request for a connection. And that might, I mean, I think that's simple enough. People can 
understand and resonate with that. And you might not even need ChatGPT then because you already have those built-in connections. This is more for like the person who's like really outside the box. Maybe they went to the same mm -hmm. school as you. Maybe they worked at a company that you worked at. Like, but you really don't have something to build off of connection with already. When you already have something like the, the people in common or something else, that's more natural than stalking their resume and, you know, scouring their history to find what to talk about. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we're going to talk about applicant tracking systems. And I don't think this was really a thing when I graduated in 2008, 15 years ago. It might have been like the beginnings of it, but really, this is re a phenomenon of the past five years. When you apply to a job, you are not sending your resume to a person anymore. If you're uploading your resume to anything like LinkedIn or Indeed or the, the website itself of the company that you're applying to, you're applying to an applicant tracking system. If you are emailing your resume or handing it to somebody or know somebody at the company that you're like passing your resume to, this is not applicable to that. Applicant tracking systems are when you upload your resume. And because companies are getting hundreds and thousands of resumes uploaded, even if they have more than 20, a lot of companies will use an ATS to help truncate the work of weeding out the people who are not uh, considered, uh, what's the word, like up to the skill level of what it is. So an ATS will take the job posting and it'll take the resume that you've submitted, probably not the cover letter, um, like some systems might, and it will grade you on your words that connect to the job posting. And it will give you this percentage or this rec rank. So obviously the higher the percentage, the better that your somebody will get eyes on your resume. And the goal with these systems is to try to get 75%. I think that's just like a a mundane goal. If a job has 500 applicants and 300 of them are over 90%, like you really, you really want to be as high as possible in these things. And so an ATS is really changing the way that people should apply. Because it used to be that you have a master resume that you send out over and over again to the whatever job you're they're somewhat in line with what you are qualified for. And so the same resume should work, but that's not the case anymore because an ATS system will look at your resume using different words to describe the same thing and say, oh, this person's not qualified because they're not using the right words. So you have to now change your resume to match the wording of that job posting. And this really becomes challenging because you have to make a new resume for every job you apply to. And if you're applying to tens or twenties or hundreds of jobs, that can be very cumbersome. So if we can go to the next slide, um, uh, this sort of shows you the breakdown. 70% of applicants will be rejected before anyone ever looks at your resume, any human looks at your resume, just because of this. And I think that's like a very large, like nationwide, worldwide, like just all these resumes are getting tuned out. But I think that's just a, a life lesson. Like, okay, I really have to make sure that my score on this ATS system is going to be high enough. And so... It, I am this um, prompt or on the slide, you see somebody like a normal posting from somebody's resume, highly driven tax manager with five plus years of financial experience, da, 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 da. and the ATS will read it here this way. It doesn't read it like word for word, like a human would. It takes out the words that it, are more meaningful and like the, the lesser words are not as, you know, read by the system. And then it will check off, okay, here are the things that are here on this person resume that we have in the job posting. And then if you don't have those words, you're not going to get that check of having being qualified for it. So the more words of the actual job posting you can get, the higher your score is going to be. Um, do you want to go ahead two pages? So there's a system called job scan, and I really recommend it because it's going to take the job description and it's going to take your uh, resume and it's going to tell you go if you go to the next page 
what percentage you have in, in your matching rate. So from here, you can see whatever that this, this was, I took this as a screen grab from JobScan's uh, videos. And this person didn't have a really good match rate. And so it's now gonna go through and tell you what words you're missing. And so I really, 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 really recommend JobScan because having that tool of here's what your percentage is and here's like, you know, here's how much you're missing. You can go word by word and put them into your resume naturally. Don't obviously don't just like lie and fluff put words in because a human will look at your resume eventually. Like still humans are still part of the hiring process, but you want to get your resume word number a lot higher. And you do that job by job. So when you have job scan, it will make the process of recreating each resume much faster. In fact, um, job scan has this tool called super edit, something like turbo edit, where it will in real time change your percentage as you're putting words in and, and modifying your resume. So it's kind of a pricey tool. It's like $50 a month. So, you know, if you are in the job search process and you're applying to more than five jobs a month, I would recommend this. So it job, the job search is not sucking your soul out because of how draining it is making so many different resumes. Okay, go back a couple slides. Um, go back one more. No, okay, go for it. So in um, these are different tools that you can use in the writing your resume. So obviously we talked about job scan where you'll upload and it will give you the percentage. Some other, I think some of these tools are free. I haven't used these tools professionally with clients. These are just other resources that are out there. So I'm not just, I'm not getting paid by job scan. Um, so you can check out whatever uh, these other resume helpers. I think some of them are free and they'll, what they'll do is you put in the job title, the job description, and it's going to, they're going to give you like the bullet points that you need. And then you can start putting them into your resume as, as appropriate. Um, and then of course there's ChatGPT. Um, I'm going to show you what ChatGPT. Oh, this is another, this is another screenshot of Resi, which is one of the other tools I mentioned. So it, um, gives you the, the, what things you need and that you are missing in your, your bullets. And so it live live as you add things in, it will take away like the, action exclamation points that are there. Uh, yes, job scan will give you five free scans a month. And if you can refer people to you, then you can get another 10 every person who, so you can just get like all your family members to do it and you can get 10 free. Um, and I think it's good to, to play around with it so that you know that it's effective for your niche or your job path before you do pay for it. I think but if you are in the process of applying to a hundred jobs, I had a client who was literally applying to more than a hundred jobs a month. And because she was unemployed, she obviously didn't want to spend that money. Then she tried the free version. Then she saw that it was like, it was really helpful to like live, see her score go up. So she paid for it. And after two months of getting 10 first round interviews and applying to 200 jobs. She was still applying to the same amount of jobs, but her number within the next month was like 20 instead of 10 over two months. So there was, that's why I recommend job scan so much is because I saw so quickly the effect that it was having on her getting your first round interview in. And she was still applying to a lot of jobs. And that just really speaks to the market that we're in that, and it's difficult to apply to all these jobs. Um, so tools like JobScan is, are gonna help you a bit faster than ChatGPT will for modifying your resume. But we still have ChatGPT and it's free. And if you know how to write your resume and what keywords you wanna put in, then we, you can do a lot with it. Especially if you know your resume is not gonna go through an ATS because I think the, the ATS does change things versus if a person's going to be looking at it. So this is somebody who sent in their resume. We're, we're keeping it anonymous, but I guess you could start Googling around Smithies who have some of these qualifications. And so we told ChatGPT, 
I am a development executive at Amazon Studios who is applying to this job at Masterclass. And then there's an actual job posting um, in that LinkedIn link that I have there. Um, paste a description of the, the job or the, the job posting into ChatGPT and then help me write an ideal resume based off of this job posting. So even before you put in your own resume, just see what ChatGPT thinks are the qualities that are they're looking for. And then we can, if you wanna go to the next slide, um, rewrite that resume based on my experience. So the prior slide was just showing uh, the ideal resume based on this job posting. And now we're gonna fill it with our own information. So if you go back to the other slide, you see that the education was UCLA, but then if you go back to the what the actual resume or like the, the you see that it's now Smith College. So we first did it this ideal, like so we can then compare, okay, what are the qualities of that? What does my resume look like in this? And then looking at the words from the job posting, how can I better translate my experiences using those words. And so ChatGPT can, and so I didn't actually study this too closely. The person who does this needs to go through and make sure that there's no lies about themselves or mistruths or, you know, added fluff that ChatGPT comes up with. Because like on ChatGPT's page, it says, ChatGPT will make up facts. And so just tell it not to lie, but also make sure edit your own resume. Don't just like start handing this off to people. So I didn't actually edit this person's resume, but I did see that it, it was speaking more to what their, their actual resume is. And so you can use ChatGPT in this way where you feed it the information of what you want. And as long as you know about these systems, you can start fixing your own resume based on it. Um, okay, so that's a great question. Do you recommend a one page resume? And I think that sort of depends on what industry you're in and how far along you are in your career. Some ATS systems will stop reading after one page because they want to get the most qualified person. But I think it really does depend. Like, obviously, if you're in academics or anything like that, one, I don't know if they're using an ATS, but anything related in that way, I think it does make sense to have all things. My husband is in tech and he's like, no, we won't read anything past one page. So it's a case by case basis. Um, we can move on. This is just another example that I didn't have a chat GPT. I didn't actually do it with a screenshot, but I put in a bullet point from your actual resume into ChatGPT and tell ChatGPT that they are a resume expert. Um, here's this bullet point from my resume. No action needed from now, just understand. If you understand, just say yes. Then ChatGPT will say, yes, I understand that I am this. And then you say, um, add in keywords from pasted job description so that they are included in this bullet point. So these are just like more prompts that you can see you if you don't want to pay for job scan, you can rework your resume with ChatGPT to include the, the things that you're needed. And it, it can come up with the first draft and then you modify it as needed. Okay, so just some overview of ATS because it's so pervasive and so, um, like we really need to master understanding ATS systems as we're applying to jobs it's really important to make sure that your resume is readable by an ATS system. An ATS is not a human. Its eyes aren't going to dart over your page as you beautifully direct it to all these different boxes. You need to have as simple of a resume as possible so that the ATS can go through it quick. Well, I don't know about quickly, but that can make sense of it. So I know it's common like for you to put pictures on your resume nowadays. An ATS doesn't care. In fact, that's just taking up valuable real estate for words that you might need to be putting in. You should put your information, basically like just take up the page. Don't use boxes, don't use panels. I mean, I think some ATSs can discern, but I mean, I think you can be as simple as possible and go in reverse chronological order because I think that's 
standard and that's what the ATS will, will most likely read. Make sure you're using an acceptable file type. Um, I think I saw, don't use anything else besides PDF, but then I saw, make sure you use doc. So make sure within the system that you're applying to that you know which file type to use, but don't use JPEG or, or things like that. Make sure that it's a, a, an acceptable file type. Um, and then there's some website like JobScan and a few other websites. You can find ATS proof templates. And I would recommend using those because you know that that's going to work for all of the ATS systems. And so you don't have to guess if it's if that will work for you. I mean, obviously, if you just have a simple format already, that will be fine as well. But they will have, I guess, slightly more beautiful or intricate, slightly intricate resume templates that you can choose from if you want to do that. But um, I don't know why that's blue, but it's harder to read when it is. So the next line, it says, you know, choose a simple layout. If you want to be more thoughtful and creative of how your resume looks, go for different sizes or bold or whatever, or you can change colors because that will all read the same. Um, yeah. And then of course, use the right keywords. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions about ATS? I have, actually, I have a question. Do like, I don't know if Christy can see, but like, can people do a thumbs up or whatever of what, um, how many of you knew about ATS? Because I think a few years ago, I, I mean, I wasn't applying to jobs a few years ago, but I didn't know that ATS was like weeding out resumes like this. So when I got into coaching, it was, it was a whole new world for this. All right. So I just want to see who else. Um, so I would say, so someone has a question, can ATS read word tables and columns? Yes, but I would stay, still stay away from them unless it's already in the template that job scan or whatever website has approved because it gets into those boxes where it breaks up the text in a funny way and you want it to just go through it. You don't want to test the system too much. And Selena, there's another question. Yes. Um, you see it? The managerial positions, higher yeah. levels. So if your resume is going to go into the system, it's going to be read by ATS. Even if you're an in-company transfer, if you're uploading your resume into a system, it's still going to go through an ATS. Now, that might not matter if there's so few applicants that they're going to look at whatever comes available, like all the resumes that come in. But I think that ATS is, is, is pretty standard. If the company is using ATS, they're going to use ATS at all levels. I think like, except maybe CEO, like, you know, that one's like a headhunter search. Um, so I, I would say on the side of let's be cautious with how we uh, use our resumes or, or we're in, uploading our resumes. If you're uploading your resume, assume it's going to be an ATS reading it. Yeah. So even when you're referred, that's still going to go through an ATS system. So get your score as high as possible when, even if you have the referral. So maybe someone's eyes will go on it, but if your score is still really low, they're not going to put too much energy into really reading through it. Of course, this all depends on the industry. I know like in tech right now, most of the companies that aren't in security are not hiring outside. So you know, they're going to be a lot pickier about what job postings they do have. And there's going to be even more applicants for those few postings. So um, my cousin my, um, just told me that she was applying to jobs recently and she had referrals at all of the companies that she was applying to and just never heard back from any of them. And she's a very qualified person. So I think it really does speak to like, the job market right now. And maybe that will change if like employers are really hungry to get qualified talent. But right now I think a lot of, at least here in, in the Bay area, a lot, it's a little bit saturated with people. Oh, thanks for saying that. Alia. Like I, I, it's a different world than 10 years ago when applying to jobs. AI has really changed how people how employers are handling this, but then also like there are tools and benefits for us as few potential employees too. So it's good to be up to date on what's possible. 
I think we can move on. Um, so this is, now we're getting into, you have your resume, um, but you don't necessarily know what jobs to apply to. And so using AI to find the jobs. Um, LinkedIn, if you have your resume updated on LinkedIn, not resume, but like all your qualities, uh, educational experience, your job experience, descriptions of it using keywords, uh, recruiters can find you on LinkedIn. So it's always good to have that as an available option. Um, and then when you start applying to jobs through LinkedIn or just even looking for jobs, you can say on the, that job posting, show me more jobs like this. And then LinkedIn's AI will start feeding you more of those jobs when you're in the, the job search mode. There's another company called Talent Prize. And this is a the picture on the, the screen is a screenshot from, from that. Um, it will, you can create, sorry, you can complete a series of questions about the job that you want, like the location, if you're willing to relocate, if it's going to be remote in office. Um, and then you fill out your about me section and your resume and your educational experience. And Talent Prize will give you, will feed you jobs, but also will send your resume to potential recruiters if you are a, a, a possible match. And what's great about that is that it's, it's sort of like another LinkedIn that I think a lot of people don't know about. So being on both of these and then maybe also Pajama and Forte, which are ones I don't have as much experience with, but they'll, there are other AI systems that you talk about yourself or you write about yourself and it will start feeding you information about what jobs to apply to or, or more postings. And it it's very industry dependent. So I can't say which one of these is better for whatever job that you're in, I think you have to do some personal investigation yourself about your industry, what else people are using around you. There's There might be more AI systems, but I think these are some of the biggest ones that are, you know, well known so that employers are actually using these as well. I think pajama is just people who, just jobs that are remote. So that's fine. I don't know why it's called that other than people being in their pajamas all day. Um, okay. So we're going to do a little bit of practice, but we're going to talk about cover letters now. Um, pick resume and cover doc AI. And then I have a, a screen grab of cover doc AI on the next slide, but these are tools where you write, you write your basics about you, and it's going to come up with a cover letter based on you and your job description, the job description. And, you know, it will, it will decomplicate the cover letter process because I think that's one of the most annoying parts of the job process it, especially if you're not fully committed to that job and you know all the ins and outs about what that job that job offering is you're just like trying to apply to jobs but you do need a unique cover letter that speaks to who you are and what that job is and highlights like why you are such a good fit for all the things that that job is and so this will sort of take out that, oh, how am I going to write about this? Okay, how much effort am I going to put into researching this company? And, you know, you, in theory, you used to have to put in a lot. The AI makes this a lot simpler. And then we're going to now practice using ChatGPT to create that prompt for you or the, to create the whole cover letter for you based on the, these things. Um so here's a, just a screen grab from CoverDoc AI. So you can see a little bit about um, like what you're looking for, the, the title. So not too important, but I think if you're writing cover letters and you want to investigate what else is out there besides ChatGPT, definitely look into CoverDoc AI because there's a, a lot of positive things are written about it. So I think it's a good resource and I think it's free. Um, yeah, so we can move on to the next one. So back to that Amazon Studios position that we were the we had the volunteer earlier. We're now writing a cover letter for that that role. So the basic prompt with with this is um, uh, write the prompt based on you. So write a cover letter for this resume based on the job description given above. The tone should be professional and excited for the opportunity. 
And this is just going to come up with a basic cover letter that talks about yourself a lot because it has your resume and maybe it can tie in a little bit of, of this. And I think this is fine, but we now know how to use ChatGPT to like up the game a little bit. So if you want to go to the next one, um, where a new prompt based on the job description from masterclass, what are the biggest challenges that the employee would face in that role on a day-to-day -day basis? And then I think this is so cool. It just comes up with all, I don't know this industry for sure. So I don't know how much of this is real, but hopefully you as applying for this job would know, but it comes up with these very realistic problems that people can have. So um, high expectations for premium content, or, you know, that's obviously a thing that Amazon Studios has. And so based on these like very specific qualities from the masterclass job posting, we are now going to write a prompt to write the cover letter. So go to the next slide. Um, based on three of the most challenging tasks the employee would face, as well as my resume, write a cover letter for the job at um, application at Masterclass. Please do not make up information. The cover letter should express excitement about the challenges that they would face in the job and is passionate about these issues and comes up with what I think is a better cover letter because it's speaking to that job. And while cover letters reference who they are, it, they really, the person doesn't care who you are quite yet. They want to see that you can speak to the challenges that they have. And this is, this is sort of like persuasive speaking at its finest. You don't speak from your qualities of like what, what's in it for you. You speak to like how you will fix the problems that they are having. You will speak to the actual problems that they face in their job and how you can help them with those very specific problems. So I think when you're writing your cover letter, this is the right approach because you want to express how you are going to help them advance. That This is not about you being qualified, but about you seeing the predicaments that they're in and that you are so excited about being part of fixing those problems or being part of the process to make things better. And I think that's that speaks to a, a cover letter overall. Um, and then another idea, and I that this also has a lot of positive feedback, but just ask for an attention grabbing hook based off of the role and your background. And ChatGPT you can write a whole cover letter just on on this with like the, your resume and the job description, just saying attention grabbing hook and go from there. So ChatGPT is so fun. Also, I want people to appreciate that I'm putting in pictures of Smith College throughout this. So we're, we can all be brought back. It's beautiful. The new library. Thank you for highlighting it for us, Selena. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even notice most of the time, but I just love this picture because the library is so cool. It's beautiful. Okay. This is a free resource from Google. So we're going to talk about interview prep, which is a, obviously a very important part of the job application process to go in and seem very qualified when you talk to the, to the people about it. So there's this free website from Google. It's called interview Warm Up from Google, or at least that's what it, I mean, you can just Google that and that's, it will come up and it's so cool. It will give you different job types and you can select and it also can just be general questions and it's going to ask you questions and record you and then give you real feedback on how you answered so how your tone of voice were you too quiet were you too loud were you too fast and it will give you all of that feedback which is it's a really cool resource that's for free so definitely practice with this even if it's just the generic questions um, having a machine watch you instead of a person is, will help take the edge off and, you know, we have to practice. So this is a really cool resource. If you want more specific tools, of course, you can go to ChatGPT and get prompts based on your posting of the job description and some information about the company. So I think we're, we're starting to see how ChatGPT can be brought in or barred, obviously. Um, don't want to forget Google in this. Um, Bard, I think when it was first introduced a month or two ago, 
people are like, oh, this isn't good compared to ChatGPT. And then now people are like, oh, this is actually really good. So they're just growing so quickly. So being aware and using both is really helpful. So you can have the same prompt and go between the two and like, and get more data. And so you can get prompts about the, your questions and you can start writing out your answers. And obviously it's not going to record you and give you feedback on how you're doing it, but at least you can prepare for those potential questions. Um, this is just the a screen grab from the interview warmup from Google. And it goes into the different, I guess, because it's Google, they're obviously, they care more about their industry, but the general questions will still do give you that feedback. Um, so these are all, you know, Google type questions or Googler, I should say, people who are applying to jobs at Google. Um, so these are some uh, prompts for, that you can help write ChatGPT to give you better questions. Um, you're a seasoned hiring manager with over 20 years of experience. You're responsible for this job posting. Highlight the three most important responsibilities in this job description. Then ask in the same uh, based on the three most important responsibilities you just identified, use my resume to structure a convincing answer to the tell me about yourself interview question. Use, okay, and this is using a formula. Or example, use the present, past, and future framework. Create a separate header for each section. The present is a snapshot of my current career situation as it relates to the job description. The past should only include previous work experiences because you don't want it to lie, um, that are applicable to this new job. And the future should draw a connection between my career trajectory and the new role. Feel free to get creative here. Keep the answer within 300 words. And here's my resume. Um, and so that's the prompt. And then another step could be further refining the future based on other information you can feed the chat GPT. So, I think that that structure of getting very specific answers to your past, it can help start the process of practicing what you want to say. And I, I mean, for me personally, the hardest part of writing is starting to write. I'm a better editor and a refiner than I am as a, the first step of, okay, what do I want to say? So if you are like me, getting that first, okay, here's something, and then modifying, even if you change everything about it, at least it got you started in thinking in the right way. And then there's lots of different styles of interviews. So there's um, the STAR method, which is a situation, the task, and then the A and the R, which I'm forgetting. Action and result, Selena. Yes, yes thank you. <laughs> um, you can ask it to create an answer for you using this formula, the STAR method, based on your resume or like maybe you have the the situation and it can help you fill the information that some like basic information and it can start filling in the words for you. Potentially also using the words from the job posting, like just feed in all the information. Obviously there's a limit to how much information you wanna put in. And I do recommend writing it outside of the text box. So you don't, it's like, you know, such a little box and you might wanna put in a lot for the prompt, but you can get very specific and have it right a really good answer for you and, you know, modify from there. Okay. That's interview prep. What's next? Okay. Negotiation tools. Um, I don't think that there's too much out there other than pay scale as a AI tool. So, and then maybe this will change, but you start filling in information about either the job that you have or the job that you want. And you start filling in information like where you are, how long you've been in that role, what's your exact title. Um, and it will give you salary ranges. So you know what the industry standard is. And then there's websites like Glassdoor and levels.fyi, which I think, I know levels is more for tech. Uh, Glassdoor I think is, um, a little bit wider, but it will give it's crowdsourced information, which is kind of like AI, except AI is as much information as you feed the system and crowdsource is like whoever happens to be willing to share their information. So it's not as uh, full, but it, I think it is representative of what's out there. So you can do your own information about search around your own job niche to see what's possible. And then, I mean, the, the, the actual 
part of asking for for money for more money because that's obviously where you're negotiating right you're not negotiating for time or, or or not time you're not negotiating for less money you might ask for other things but asking for more should always be part of the process and this is always something that you should research you should have your minimum of what you know your worth is you should have a, like okay this is really what i'm going to gun for and have a path forward of like how you will explain that your qualities match what the industry standard is saying that you're worth. Don't say like, oh, because I live here in the Bay Area, I deserve this much money. Really talk about it from the point of, I'm bringing these qualities to the table and this is what that job is worth. And obviously practicing being with a person and having that conversation is helpful or or if it's over email, I guess that's fine too, but like know that you should negotiate. And having all the tools at your disposal to say like, this is why you are worth that. And everyone is worth more probably than what they're getting paid. So you're just at this basic level. Okay, I'm worth more. Just always be there. Men have it. We need to make sure that we have it. We have it built into our psyche too. Like I deserve it this much. And you get as much information to feed that as possible. And that's where you should start your negotiation. Okay. Okay, so that's sort of wrapping up the um the webinar so this is some last advice i have that's not quite ai focused but just how we can be present in the job search um one of the best things i think is to set up job alerts you can set up job alerts on google linkedin usa jobs i mean you can just google where can i set up job alerts and just start feeding your information into this each of these systems so that you are emailed as soon as a job becomes available because ATS systems not only will rank you on your words, but it also will say like, you know, we'll take the first number of applicants and not the last that come in. So even though like the job posting is still open, if they have enough qualified people applying at the beginning, they won't need to go to the end. So I think having those job alerts is helpful. And then make sure you have an up-to-date resume that you feel comfortable modifying. Um, don't change your resume each time make sure that this is like okay this is my essence this is who i am and what i want and then you change from that one so you will have you know potentially hundreds of different resumes but there's still that one that is who you are and that's like what you work from each time um it's really important to avoid burnout so deciding your process deciding how many jobs you're going to apply to if you're going to be more discerning of what jobs you apply to versus if you start getting interviews, maybe saying no to interviews before you even have it, just because you know it's not going to be a good fit. Or maybe you do all of this, but you feed your soul in some other way so that you don't get burned out because it, it's like as somebody who's not applying, but with the person who is applying, it is so hard. And you have to take care of yourself in this process. So much rejection is not personal. It's just, you know, the dynamics of the world that we're in, but it's hard not to take it personally. So take care of yourself to avoid burnout. And if you feel like you're burning out, you talk to somebody about why that might be. I mean, a coach is definitely somebody who can help you, but just talking out your feelings about the process and figuring out where you can pull back or how you can re-energize yourself in the process is, is really helpful. So don't, don't bottle this all up in your head. And then I think also, Assume that you're qualified. If you aren't meeting all of the qualifications, but you think you could do the work, assume that you're qualified and just be extra zealous about figuring out how to make sure your resume is read. I think, I mean, so many men assume that they're qualified and, and women don't. I, we should not look at it that way because then just men are showing up more and I think that's hurting the world men showing up more and not women. So just figure out ways to make sure that you can get some to talk to somebody if you really feel like this job is a good fit for you and you don't think that you're meeting all the qualifications. Um, okay, and then always network. I think networking is the most important part of the job search process. Um, I live in Silicon Valley where the, the Stanford network is ridiculous and how supportive they are of each other. I have clients who went to Stanford and they just, look for people who went to Stanford, who are at the job that they want. And then Stanford, the people will write back almost instantly and respond to them. So like 
I mean, I think Smith is probably the same way. Like if, if you reach out to Smithies, we will be as supportive. I just happen to be where there's a thousands, hundreds of thousands of Stanford's around Stanford alumni around here. And it's, it's really powerful to use your network and be constantly building your network and support women and not just look for help for yourself, but be that help for more people when people reach out to you. Um, I am always free to talk to, to young Smithies whenever they want. And I hope that other Smithies feel the same way. Um, Selena, okay. that's a perfect segue. That was a perfect segue. I love how you set us up there. Okay. Um, first of all, everyone join me in thanking Selena for that amazing presentation. That was oh. so fascinating. Um, it was a lot of information. Um, and so one of the things that I want to highlight for everyone is that Selena mentions being available to support Smithies. I think she meant that in a networking capacity, but Selena is a part now of our referral coaching program. So we have a whole team of Smith alums who are coaches like Selena and Jamie, who's also on the call, who are available to connect with you one-on-one -on -one for career support. So I'm going to drop in the chat right now a calendar where you can book a coffee chat with Selena, a free coffee chat, um, where she could definitely dig in a bit more to what she shared here today. Um, but we do have eight minutes left and I wanted to see if anybody has any questions we were answering along the way, but um, any questions about what Selena just shared with us that you wanna ask while we're all here together on the call? Yes, Elizabeth. Hi there, thank you, this is really great. Um, I'm wondering if there are any common pitfalls that you see people using with these AI tools, because it seems to me that you know, people could take some shortcuts and run into some problems. Um, obviously you mentioned, for example, not having factual information, that's a big one, but are there other things that you think people should be careful to avoid when they're using these tools? I think the most common problem with it when I use it is that thinking the writing is terrible. And so if you, don't finesse the writing. If you don't have a better prompt to get more accurate to what you're envisioning, you're going to have a generic output that is going to be terrible. And if you use that, you know, you're to your disadvantage, you need to really know how to use the AI and then, you know, be very mindful of editing it the right way. So I think that's because the writing can be terrible. It's like sourced from the internet and it's not the highest quality for like average, right? So we have to make sure we're upping, we're bringing our full self to that writing process. Yeah. And Selena, you and I talked about that quite a bit when we were preparing this workshop and Lindsay, who's also on the call was a part of that conversation as well. Just how AI is something that really can get you started. Selena, you just said you're a better editor than you are a writer from scratch. And I think that's something to really keep in mind about all of these tools is that they still require your own human interaction with them. Um, and there is no replacing that in the long run, right? So AI can get you started. It can give you kind of these tips and tricks that will level you up, but it's still really necessary that you as an individual review that, make sure that it's not lying about you, which I think is just so funny, Selena. <laughs> um, and, and just make sure that it really fits what you're looking for and has your personal feel. So it's about how it can accelerate your process, but it certainly isn't something that you can copy paste from one to the other, um, like many people think might be possible with that kind of a tool. I mean, it, it depends on who you want to send it to. If it doesn't matter, then use it to like save yourself time because it doesn't matter. You just need to like write that email and send it quickly, like whatever. But if it's, it's like your job application, I do think that you have to be a little bit more mindful of what is put out, especially because of like the word tracking. Yeah, definitely. Um, Wei, you have a question if you want to unmute. Hi, I so much appreciate um, this presentation. I'm actually <clears throat> hoping to use AI. I'm going through a career transition and I would actually like to look at um, things that I've done in previous jobs that I've really enjoyed and also skills that I like using um, and sort of try to reverse engineer AI to help me figure out what might be an ideal next job. Do you have, do you have any comments on that? I mean, I think 
so that goes, I, I do that with a lot of people. So if you want to use AI, that first prompt of what is possible, you can modify that a lot to speak to who you are, what you've done in the past. Um, it might, I think AI, the chat GPT tends to like have 10 outputs at once. If you only like one of those, or even if you like multiple of them, you can say expound on this, uh, this potential career path and give more career paths that are similar to this or and you can do that multiple times if there's others that maybe pique your interest but aren't quite right um I think also having a just a brainstorming session with somebody uh, a friend who knows you and and what you're capable of but also you know understands maybe a little bit about the world that you want to go into as well like that's another benefit of, of talking to a person and you know doing it live with somebody will help bring ideas out of your own head. Like, no, I don't think I would like that. Or I would like that a bit more. And then I think for the transitions, it's really about starting to investigate on your own. So once you have some ideas about what's possible, AI can take you, give you that, those lists and like, here's, here are things, but start investigating or networking with people and, and seeing what it takes to get into that field and seeing if that's something that you're, you're inter still interested in once you like start talking to people or see what extra education you need, which, I mean, I don't ever want to go back to school. I love school, but like, it's also really draining to be in school. So, if, you know, take those sorts of considerations into mind. Like, I, I don't think I have what it takes to do this, but I have some of the qualities to do this. And maybe I can just like learn on the job. Um, So start, you have to do those investigations yourself. And AI is not going to tell you what's going to be the perfect fit for you, but it can brainstorm for you. Great. And I think, I mean, I th this is probably a little generic because people are coming to me because I'm a coach, but so many people are upset with their, their job. The, I don't know if it's like the stress of the world or just our economy, or maybe this is always what adult life is like. And I'm just like seeing it more now because I'm in coaching, but like most people are really upset with, with their current circumstances and they want change. And so being mindful about what change looks like for you that will bring you joy. If it's, you know, if it's just the depression of the circumstances of our world, you know, your job isn't going to change. You're, you're probably still going to be upset in the next job. So being mindful of really where, why you want that change. Like if you need the pay raise, if you want, if it's just like time to learn something new and that will help you define what's next better as well. Great. I think we have one last question and we have one minute left. So um, Ali, I'll leave it to you to decide if you want to ask it now or if you want to reach out to Selena one-on-one. -on -one, but Okay. Okay. Hi, Selena. So first of all, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Um, quick question about, it's going back to the ATS systems. And um, I understand about the resume and the word match. When you apply online, it also asks you to fill out information and a lot of it is brought over from the resume, but then there are additional questions as well. So what is the ADS system looking at? Is it looking at what's what you're typing in or is it taking the words from the actual resume file, PDF file? If you could help me understand that, that would be great. Okay, so I don't know to, I mean, I think it might depend a little bit, but I'm sure it's both. So. Okay. I think that you want to get your resume as high as possible and it, they're for sure looking at your resume. So, it, and it's the extra questions is just like bonus. I don't know if the ATS system is really grading it like the same way as your resume, but okay. obviously using the words, the correct wording is essential in this part too. Like you shouldn't be like, oh, I'll just answer how I naturally feel. Not anymore. You got to like, you got to feed the system what it wants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Great. That was great. That was a very practical final question for this session. Um, so again, Selena, thank you so much for you, offering this session for all of us. I will put in a plug. Selena came to reunion and that's how we met and that's how we got kind of connected and linked up in this way. So to your point, Selena, about the Smith Network, 
Um, it is really available to all of us. We have a lot of ways that you can tap into it. We have a, while we're talking about technology, a beautiful new app that you can have on your phone. You can access from your computer to connect with fellow Smithies. So we can add that to the list of technologies that can support your career search. And I like to think we're just as open as, as those Stanford folks to supporting each other. And in my experience, that, that is, that is how we all are. So, um, please reach out to each other, come to more of our sessions. Um, we're hosting some drop-in career support sessions through the rest of the fall, um, where you can just come and ask questions that you might have. Um, we'll be holding a couple other workshops this academic year that will up your LinkedIn game and, and things like that. So I'm going to put together a nice uh, summary of some of the resources we've shared today and information about how to be in touch with Selena if you'd like to work with her. Um, but I And I'll send that to everyone on this call and anyone who registered. But I really just want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Selena, for being here. Um, and say that I hope that we see so many of you on our future webinars. Thank you, everybody.